everyone needs met with downrange. Uh, we got our load of lumber in right next to me right here, so we're gonna do some unboxing, so let's get to it. All right, unboxing is not the most exciting thing in the world, so let's do a quick flight training update. Uh, sadly for me, it has now been five weeks since I've been in the airplane between mechanical issues and stuff coming up at work. So unfortunately for me right now, uh, it's going to be a hot second before I get back on the bird. But my next flight is currently scheduled for November 1st, so it is coming up. Uh, I just got to get through sniper school this next week and then uh, Tennessee trip to get some work done down there. So definitely stay tuned for those, for those updates. All right, so everything's been opened up. Uh, we have got our wonderful load of lumber. So now I need to get that rip. I'm gonna get a couple of calls to figure out if I have somebody who can help me with that. If not, what we'll probably end up doing is figuring out a way to get a jig on the, uh, uh, one of the saws that we have at the shop because I really, the band saw would probably do a much better job than the table saw in giving us nice narrow cuts with the least amount of wasted material especially considering how long it took to get this stuff and what it freaking costs. So if we can get that rolling, I'm hoping to get that going by the end of day today, I will let you know because regardless, it's going to be a bit of a challenge to be ripping eight foot boards on any kind of a table apparatus. But I might have a line so you can help with that. Either way, it's gonna get filmed and you're gonna be along for the ride. So let's see how this goes. All right, what you're watching now is the actual jig assembly. So I'm using two by twos as blockers that I'm actually going to do the clamping against the spar material. And that's going to clamp it up and you see me chopping here. So here is a fun little hint about this. What you're watching happening is the initial jig setup, which I didn't end up using. I ended up having to redo all of this. You'll see the final product in the last uh, series of photos at the end of this portion of it. Um, but I'll kind of show you why, as we get to progress, I'll show you why when we get to the table views. But what you are seeing me here is prepping the drill press to make sure that we have consistent depth. Because I drew, what I would end up doing is drilling pilot holes. And then this is obviously just a countersunk hole, just to make sure that the uh, screws had enough bite into not just the blocker component, which you're looking at right there, but also has enough bite to sit in there and then through into the base table underneath. So that's what that's all about right here. So this is just getting those two by twos because they're cheap, they're easy to maneuver, they're easy to work with. The lumber doesn't cost a terrible amount of money. They were an ideal blocker material once I figured out the proper way to do this. Right here, you see each of them getting drilled with one single uh, countersunk hole. What I ended up doing is I ended up cutting each of the blocks longer later, four inches in depth and then uh, four inches in length and then putting two holes a top and a bottom that actually helped prevent any kind of spinning on this when it came time to do this so what you saw there is just watching me draw pilot holes all the way through the material i did change one thing in the final construction plan when i did the jigs is in addition to drilling that pilot hole i actually drilled the pilot hole all the way through uh, not just the two by two but all the way into the table itself to ensure that when the screw put in there, it didn't cause the blocks to move. Because what I found out when I was doing the one-by-ones was two things happened. One, the blocks moved under uh, the drilling force when I was trying to get them drilled into the tabletop. Uh, in addition to that, they spun. It was not very consistent, but when I drilled the pilot hole through the countersink all the way through directly into the table and then directly added a screw, uh, drill hole, it worked great. And you can see it there where I had those set up and they're just prepped. So at that point you can see the two holes, they're anchored, they didn't move and it was perfectly aligned in the plan and you can see it right there. Right here is Hayes Fine Cabinetry. You gotta thank Dave Hayes. He helped me out like crazy because he has this amazing rip saw that uh, he uses for cabinet making. As you can tell, this made life so much easier for getting all that spar material ripped to length. Hey everybody, the moment we've all been waiting for and I've been talking about for almost a year now, wing spar construction. So I'm going to step out of the way here momentarily, get in front, get the GoPro running so we can see all that good uh, jazz as well, get some epoxy mix and we're going to do the first layer on wing spar lamination. So if you couldn't see what I was just doing right over there, I have my two and a quarter inch wide wing spar pieces 
plus I have my one inch piece of rear wing spar pieces. This is all for the center section that's going to actually get attached to the fuselage. So this is what we're going to get rolling on today because we have at least a week uh, for sure of really good weather. So we're going to take advantage of it. So I'm trying to, going to try to get to the excuse me, three to four laminations done every single day this week. So stay tuned, we're going to get the epoxy mixed up. Uh, probably gonna be mixing way too much, so I might be making an aircraft spruce run later this week to go get more, but we are gonna get some epoxy mixed up right now, get the first two laminations done. So we'll do the front spar and the rear spar laminations, get those done right now, and then uh, more studying going, going forward. But we're gonna get this done by the end of the week, guaranteed. Uh, Let's get rolling. Shockingly, more epoxy mixing. Uh, plenty of videos that float around now, but this is what we were doing. So on these uh, two and a quarter inch laminations that I had to do, uh, right here I'm not actually mixing enough. I had to do a, a mid-batch right in the middle of this just to get this all done properly. But uh, I did ultimately settle on, I mixed about 40 grams of T88 uh, epoxy with 36 additional grams of uh, hardener. That's what I ended up using for this, and that covered the board pretty effectively with maybe between 5 and 10 grams of excess left over. It was a little different each time just because of the density of it, depending on how warm or cold it was. So the colder days, I typically used up almost all of it, and in the warmer days, I usually had a little bit more left over. But uh, pretty easy process. I just used those acid brushes to spread it on there nice and thick, uh, seal it up, and then clamp that in, starting in the center just to make sure it pushed outward as much as possible to make sure we didn't have any weird bends or curves or anything in the actual uh, lamination so it went uh, solidly and you can see there where those blockers are in place really made life a lot simpler here um, you can see that epoxy kind of pressing up and out so i just needed to make sure when this was put together that everything was relatively smooth and level and uh Going through it, it took about a week, so I got it done in the timetable I wanted to. And as you can see here, the laminations kept building up, building up, until we uh, finished her out and we had a completed one. And my injured hand as a result. And this was Dave again, sanding that sucker down to a beautiful finish. And those are our two completed spars. Thank you to everybody for tuning into this YouTube video. Uh, a couple of quick updates from downrange while I have you still here, if you can make it all the way to the very end. A bunch of cool stuff coming up. Uh, next month, we will be doing our toy drive for Shining Star. I'll put a link to their organization at the bottom of this YouTube channel. Um, anybody who can drop off spare toys, unwrapped, male and female, uh, anybody under the age of 18, drop those by the shop. Definitely ask about that. Next week is going to be Sniper Week. That's the 21st of October through the 25th of October. That'll keep me extremely busy. And then I'll be doing a bunch of work down in Tennessee that following week for the next seven days. So uh, looking forward to all the stuff that's happening on here. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in, supporting this channel, and thanks for supporting Downrange in general. We'll talk to you next time.